Ladies and gentlemen, with the Valorant full release, there's tons of people flooding in the game, and that could be you. Even if you played the game since beta, you could still be succumbing to the top 5 noob mistakes that if you don't fix, could perpetually keep you from improving at the game of Valorant. So let's run through them and give you actionable tips on what you need to do differently in order to start popping off in your games. Anyways, if you like Valorant news, content, or if you want to improve at Valorant, smash that sub button. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now, the first terrible noob mistake has to do with poor gunplay fundamentals. You typically see this in players that have never played an FPS before, or if they have, they play different types of FPSs like Overwatch or even Call of Duty, where crosshair placement is far more forgiving. Now, the most common thing you see from a new player is they'll be walking around looking at the floor. You need to always be looking head level. The idea here is that you have to flick very little or not at all in order to shoot someone in the head as you see them when you go around the corner. The less you have to flick, the easier your shots are going to be, and with good crosshair placement, you actually can have less mechanical skill, but hit more shots. So this is something that every new player needs to get right, right off the bat. Now that's not the end of crosshair placement. You also need to understand that you need to hug your crosshair when you're slow walking around a corner, and also when you're holding an angle, give yourself enough room away from the edge, so that if someone runs through and tries to swing you very rapidly, you can still adjust either left, closer towards the wall, or right, further away, depending on how far they moved. If you hug it too closely, it's going to be hard for you to flick all the way out into the middle if they don't actually just barely peek you. Now another gunplay fundamental that people get wrong in a game like Valorant, is they try to run and gun. This is not a run and gun game. This is not Apex, this is not Overwatch. If you are running actively and you're trying to run, jump, or anything like that, your gun is gonna be very inaccurate. What you need to understand about Valor is that when you're actually taking engages, when you're actually pulling the trigger, more often than not, you need to be trying to stay fairly still, if not completely still. Now, you can swing people where you run up to someone but you want to be counter strafe stopping and then firing at them. So if you haven't learned how to counter strafe, let me give you the simple way to understand how to do it. You run in one direction. What you do is you instantly hold shift and at the same time, you tap the other direction instantly just for one second and then you stop touching your keyboard or you just stop moving altogether. What this does is corrects your movement so that you instantly stop all your momentum and you're gonna be pinpoint accurate from then on. So that's a way to go straight from running to stopping and being accurate. You need to master this tactic and it's frankly really easy to master as long as you know you're not supposed to be running and gunning and that you need to practice counter strafing. Now the last thing that you need to understand about this game in particular as opposed to a lot of other games not including counter strike is that guns have a certain spray pattern. Every single gun will have its own unique spray pattern that if you just spray it without any sort of correction from you, the player, it will go in a certain pattern every single time. Now, the pattern isn't 100% consistent, but a lot of it is, and if you can learn the pattern, you can better control your weapon. Learning the pattern on each and every gun that you plan on using is the best way in order to be able to actually fire at someone for longer periods of time. Oftentimes, if you don't master spray pattern control or don't even think about it, your gun's going to end up shooting at the ceiling by the time you're done with a full clip burst. So really keep this in mind and practice this in the training room. And in addition to that, make sure you practice little tiny bursts to help you keep your spray under control. Little three or four round bursts are incredibly accurate and consistent, and they're good ways to take engagements. Now, moving on to the second new mistake that you need to fix is not full clearing angles. Now, something that's really common, especially from new players, is that they will always peek close angles with their body. If you have utility, let's say you have a molly or maybe you have a potential hot hands in your phoenix, you can clear angles without having to look at these angles. Here's the thing. If you peek a close range angle and there's a jet holding a shotgun right there, you're probably going to die or at the very least, you're going to trade for the jet. Now that you do not have to set up that scenario at all, you can clear her out of corners altogether. This allows you to get free kills and it actually prevents enemies from holding these places altogether because frankly only bad players can hold these places when their enemies simply do not punish them for holding these aggressive angles or these aggressive cubbies. Now lastly, when it comes to this section, you need to not trust that an ally has checked an angle unless you actually saw him do it. I can't tell you how many times I've hidden an angle and the first guy walked right by me, didn't check the angle, and then two people followed behind them and all three of them are in the same room as me and none of them checked where I was and I managed to get at least two kills, sometimes I kill all three of them, because the first guy didn't check the angle and then both of the other guys just assumed he checked the angle so they all die because of it. 
you do not have to trust your teammates in this game at all but if you actually fix a lot of these mistakes and rank up when ranked mode comes out a lot of your teammates will be a lot better at these fundamentals as well so you can rely on them a little bit more as you rank up now moving on to the third new mistake this is not keeping proper pace in order to win the round if the enemy has planted the spike, you not only need to kill everybody, but you also need to have time to defuse. If you can't kill everyone and defuse the spike, even if you go fast, then just save your gun. There's no point in going in. But if you understand that you can, if you pick up your pace, then you need to pick up your pace. There's no point in slow peeking every single angle if you kill everything and by the time you do, the bomb explodes. Watch the top left map in particular, when you're running, there'll be a giant white circle around you and it will show you exactly where your footstep sound reaches. So if you're a mile away from where the spike was planted on the other side of the map, you do not need to be slow walking. You can go exponentially faster because more than likely a lot of the enemies are going to be playing on point because they just planted it. Now the last mistake that happens often is with bait defuse kills. I can't tell you how many times I've seen enemies where the bomb is about to explode and they try to defuse it or they start trying to defuse it and then they instantly pop off of it because they think they're going to get peaked. But then they don't get peaked and they try to defuse it again and they don't have enough time. You need to understand that even if you're trying to bait the enemy into doing something, if they don't peek at that exact moment and you don't kill them at the exact moment, then you're not going to be able to actually stick the plant. One thing I would highly suggest you do is realize that if you can get the plant to the halfway mark, then it actually locks that value so you can lock it to the halfway mark, then challenge the enemy, and if the enemy doesn't want to challenge you again, then you probably can do the full defuse from a halfway to finish point before they peek you and kill you. Now moving on to the next big noob mistake on the list, it's not investing abilities or ultimates. If you are a character with tons of utility, let's say you're a sage and you have slows and ice and everything, but you were just trading and dying with your life at the start of every round with zero delay or utility trade, then you are failing. It is okay to invest your utility as long as you just don't blow it all at once, but you never want to be dying, especially when it's your job to delay the enemy and not let them rush onto point. You never want to be dying without some sort of delay. In addition to this, ultimates are perhaps the worst offender where players will often be at like a 3-3 parity, but they don't want to invest their ultimates because in their mind it might quote unquote be a waste. Often, it's better to secure the round and win the eco than not use your ultimate at all in a close round and lose because you didn't want to invest. Here's a general takeaway that applies to life, but it really applies to Valorant as well. Often, the incorrect play made quickly is better than the perfect play made too late. In a game like Valorant or even the real world, like I said, there is always a cost to delaying a decision. And that's something that you really need to understand in a game where so many things can happen incredibly fast. Now moving on to the fifth and final noob mistake, and this might be one of the worst ones, and it's terrible economy understanding. You need to be buying when your team buys and saving when your team saves. Every one of your team members wants to be on very similar playing fields. You don't want to have some members with really good guns and some members with pistols. It just doesn't make any sense because it makes it so it's far less likely for you to win the round. On top of this, think about what enemies can afford and don't buy typically if you will be at a huge disadvantage. That means if you're buying sheriffs up against vandals, they are going to have a huge advantage. And if you're going to be fighting them in long, then you're just setting yourself up for failure. So you might as well just save until you can put yourself on a more even playing field. Now, if you do buy during an eco round, either you have some extra money or you're trying a specific strategy, you need to be playing in a zone where you still have advantage against more expensive guns. Let me give you this example. If you want to buy a shotgun, if you play in a really close range area where you still have the close range advantage up against their gun, then that is a way that you can actually get value. But if you buy a shotgun and you're playing out in the open, you're just going to get slaughtered by their guns. So that's something that's really important for you to understand. This all goes along with thinking about the effective range of your weapons and playing into the range that your weapons are effective and outside the range that the enemy's weapons are effective if you aren't using the exact same weapons. Now something important is a 2000 credits is the golden rule for economy because even if you lose the round you're still going to get 1900 credits if you do nothing else which means you'll get to that 3900 credit threshold that lets you buy a rifle either the vandal or the phantom and full armor which is the de facto go-to composition that every single person should try to strive to buying and then lastly to help you think about some things keep in mind that when the enemy's on eco they could potentially have shotguns in close range 
That is a perfect example of flushing people out with utility like I talked about before. If people have pistols, if you know the enemy is going to be running pistols, oftentimes they will not split push. They will actually joint push a site altogether and try to swarm you. That is where it's really important to use your utility and prevent them from flooding into you because what they want to do is flood into you, trade out and steal your better weapon so that they have a decent fighting chance. That is exactly what you don't want to have happen. It's far better for you to actually die in a full team fight instead of one at a time and trade out because like I said, the enemies can pick up your weapons. And then lastly, let's think about oppers. If you have an op and you know the enemy has an op, you need to think about who can hold the long sight line first because with an op, you always need to be holding it. And if you're the one holding it first, you have the advantage, right? Because you can just hold the angle and instantly fire when they peek. So think about how long does it take me to get to this angle and which one of us can get to this angle first and that will tell you whether or not you can push in aggressively to take an angle or if you should be more reserved and perhaps try to find a different route or avenue in order to make a play on the enemy in an op 1v1. Anyways, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below and if you liked this type of video, do me a huge solid and smash that sub button. Anyways, that's all we got for you today. I'm Coach Mills and until next time,